This is the future. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and I know you guys have been waiting for this one. So before we start, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Give this video a like and subscribe to my channel and remember to hit that bell icon so that you can get notified of my further uploads. Feel free to check out my updated website and or join my Facebook group to get behind the scenes info. I was told over my dead body will you ever buy a bike so i did mom and dad isn't here anymore so i bought the bike personally i never thought that i would have one anyway it was always good to look at it's a nice thing to know always called it a coffin on wheels and being in emergency services i've done a couple of bike accidents so you always have that fear in your mind that it's, it's a dangerous thing you don't want to have it but it's nice to look at Unfortunately, circumstances has forced me into buying one. Fuel prices is getting out of hand and again next month our petrol prices here in SA is going up with about 30 cents which pushes us I think if I'm not mistaken over 25 rand already per litre. So at the moment my petrol budget is like three and a half thousand. With the bike I can save about two and a half thousand of that petrol budget. Not that it's going to save anything, I'm just going to relocate that money to something better. Like food for example. I think it's important to eat as well. So why did I choose this bike? A Honda NC700. At the CMA, where I did my classes, the instructor there, or our president, actually recommended that bike. Because of the roads that I'm taking, I'm going to be riding to work and back. It's a very uneven road. It's about 60 k's up and down, it's long distance. So he told me that to get a mid-tier bike, that's a bit of an adventure bike, that can go, go on and off-road, and it's a good commuter, is the best option for me to start on. Plus the NC isn't even that high. I tried to sit on a GS before, it's too high, I I'm, don't like the tippy-toe thing. I'm just too new at this whole bike riding thing, so I didn't feel comfortable with it. I wanted something where I can sit down and put my feet flat on the ground and feel like I have control over the bike. And then, I know it's just a mental thing, but for me, that was my choice. So I did my training about a year ago, got my learners, but never had a bike to go and ride on. So finally, I started riding, and I only have, I think, about six or seven months left before I have to get my license, because I'm not gonna ride the learners again. So I have to get used to this bike now and then go and ride my license. Another thing that I like about this bike, it's very light in fuel. You can get about 30 k's per litre and it's got a 13.5 litre tank. I just filled it up the other day and I, it cost me 260 rand to fill up the whole tank and I can ride about 5 or 6 shifts with one tank. Where at the moment I'm spending 500 rand on the car to ride 4 shifts and on the Runex, I have to spend 700 Rand to ride four shifts. That's how big the difference is. So like any other new rider, I did a lot of research on YouTube. I checked Dan Dan the Fireman and Yami Noob. When I decided to go for this bike, I did a lot of research on it, made sure it's the right type of bike for me. And of course, when I saw it, it just, there was no other, no other choice. The choice was made for me. This bike, I bought it for you know, 50k, it only has 23,000 k's on the clock and it's a 2013 model. For the price, the kilos and uh, the, the model of year, for me that was a no-brainer. Um, I do see on Facebook Marketplace there's a couple of bikes for that's going for 40,000 but then you're looking at 79, 80,000 k's on it. And I wanted something that's basically brand new, that I can break in myself and I can work on it myself. So I even went as far as doing motorbike maintenance courses online. I'm at the moment busy doing a motorbike mechanics course online to make sure that I know how to fix this bike. 
I'm not going to spend a lot of money taking it to someone else. You guys know me. I do my own shit. I even went as far. Oh, I was even lucky enough to download a service manual and a maintenance manual for this bike online. So I've got everything I need to fix this bike from tail to tail. So luckily I had this friend that went to pick up the bike for me in Pretoria. And the next morning when I got it, I did what any new, new biker or first time biker would do with his first bike. I saw it coming down the road and I went like and then I dropped it. That wasn't fun. Got a couple of scratches on it. But I also learned to pick it up. It was a good learning curve for me. I was able to actually use the method that I've seen on YouTube a lot of times and it works like a charm, walking the bike back. And then I went through everything. Check the mechanism, check the, the check the brakes, check the clutch, check the gear lever, check for any oil leaks, check the chain. Started looking at all the components that I need to check at. Started learning the controls. And that's another thing I love about this bike. It's got the most simplistic controls ever. Now this is the 700X, so it's like the base, base, baseline. There's no ABS, there's no gear indicator, there's no fancy buttons, there's no riding modes, there's no cruise control, nothing of that sort. As you can see on the controllers, it is straightforward. Hooter, indicator, hazards on the one side, on the other side, you just have your start button, your kill switch, nothing funny. It's so easy to learn this bike. On my second day, I've spent practicing riding this bike. So luckily I've got a very quiet area and I did what any other first time biker should do. Pull away, stop. Pull away, stop. Learn the friction zones. Learn how far to open the throttle. Get that muscle memory going. Learn how to stay up. The one thing I'm still struggling with though is tight turns. I haven't done any slow move maneuver training yet. I'm still looking for a quiet pocket place where I can go and practice those slow turns. I'm still turning too wide. I need to start practicing the slow and tight maneuvers. Um, so that's one of the key things that I still struggle with. This weekend that went past was a mini first. That was a time for mini first for me. I went onto the highway for the first time. I rode more than 25 kilometers per hour for the first time. I felt the wind move you around on the bike for the first time. That was quite an experience. It was interesting to see the bike going stable and straight while you were doing this on the bike because the wind was very bad. Um, it was my first time in high-speed traffic so I was very nervous. It's very, it is very frightening the first time you do it and don't let anyone else tell you they need different. Everyone had to start at one point. It's freaking scary, okay? You don't know what to expect, you don't know what the bike is going to do, you don't know what's going to happen in traffic. Will they ride over you the first day? Will you be able to cope with everything? And that's why it's important to know how to pull away and stop first, before you do anything else or go anywhere else. Now, today will be my first day that I'm going to travel from home to work on a very bad road. It's the worst road you can find. It's narrow, it's full of holes, it's full of traffic, full of trucks. So I'm just telling myself mentally, take it slow, take it easy, they have to go around you. And it's only a two lane road, if somebody comes from the front, which is happening because that road is congested the whole time. If I just stay, protect my lane, I should be fine. And also I don't ride at night. If I can prevent it, I'll prevent it. That's why I want to go for night shift because I'm riding in the day and I'll come back tomorrow morning in the sunlight. It's just safer for me for now, until I can get used to the whole thing. Would I recommend this bike for a beginner? Of course, and I'll tell you why. Everyone told me start with a small bike, start with like a 400 or a 300 because it's forgiving. If you open up the throttle, it's not going to wheelie and it's not going to throw you off. But as another guy told me, the bike only goes as fast as you allow it to go. So learn your control, your throttle. It is a bit heavy. And I never once ran away with it or had it overpowered or really did nothing. I just started off slow and I'm keeping it slow. And that's it guys, in a nutshell. 
I got this bike because I was told it's a good commuter. And it is a good commuter. It's light on fuel. Your service intervals is like a car, it's like 12,000 Ks. Although you have to service it a bit earlier if you drive longer distances, but you can push it up to 12,000 Ks before you have to service it. You can get about 15,000 Ks on the, on the tires. It's not something that you have to service every second week. It's not going to cost me a lot of money. So that's it guys, that's my thought on this bike. So I would like to ask you, um, if you like this video, remember to subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell icon so that you can get notified of my following uploads. There's a couple of interesting still to come. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And until next time guys, whatever you do, keep it safe. Cheers.